I've heard, you know, legends say Soldier Boy has the ability to rap on a few songs, but I've yet to hear it. So see if the myths are true. Right. <laughs> After Playlist, the music reaction and discussion podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Lee. And I'm Terry Yo. What's up, Terry Yo? What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. So today we're going to be talking about songs that we're thankful exist for any reason, really. Whether it's something personal to us, more broadly related to music at large, or somewhere in between. We're thankful this holiday season for these tracks in particular. But first... But first, we love music and we love talking about it. But of course, how we do it, we have to put our disclaimers right up front. So number one, we we respect everyone's opinion, regardless of how wrong or terrible it may be. Number two, we're just talking about the music. If an artist has counseled before, after, or during this discussion, doesn't mean that we're advocating for whatever they did or did not do, allegedly. And number three, these songs today are just one of the things that we're thankful for this year. Number one, we're thankful for this podcast. Thankful for um, you as a listener. That's definitely a top of our list. Uh, thank you for supporting us. And for me personally, I'm thankful for you, Brandon Lee, for joining Aww. for joining me on this journey. So this I'm is thankful to you too, man. And and yes, thank you, audience listeners. Uh, thank you very very much. It means the world to us, and you guys have supported us so far, and we hope you continue to do so for much time to come. Yeah. And lastly, as always, you can check the show notes for song links and ways you can support the artists featured in today's episode. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and dive into the songs that we appreciate. You okay. want to start first? I can go first. Why not? Okay. You want to just go in order? You don't want to hop around today? How do you want to do it today? Uh, we, can, we, can, we can hop around. Why not? Okay. Then I'm going to start with the very last song I added, actually. I'm going to start with Feels Like Summer by Childish Gambino. I want to say, before you get into it, I almost picked this one. Yeah? I almost did. I thought about it, and I thought it was... I actually had it ready to go, but I was just like, ooh, I don't know. Well, I was like, uh, I might have one that might have bumped it out of the way, but I, I had a feeling this song was going to show up in some form or fashion, but it was it was definitely one of my picks as well. I, I do feel like this is definitely one of those songs with a music video that was created mm-hmm. for it gives yes. very different connotations than than the song itself. Yeah, yeah, um, it does. So I, I'll go ahead and get into why I, I'm thankful for this song, and it sounds like you're probably a little thankful to the song somewhat as well. So I'll let you get into it after that. But f- not so much the video; definitely more so for me, it's the the actual song. Um, I'm fairly certain this is a song, at least in large part, in reference to like global warming and all the effects that that has. And I'm thankful for the song just as a song that's like kind of highlighting that, but in a uh, still artistic way, like a a song that I kind of compare it to, even though this artist is also featured elsewhere on this list, is Lil Dicky has a song, Earth, that has like... A bunch of random other artists that hop on mm-hmm. and, and sing along talking about, you know, we need to save the planet or whatever. Yeah. And as much as I'm a fan of several of the artists on that song, it, it always just felt like kind of ham fisted and like just not not taking it seriously. Whereas this one definitely, like I said, is more of an artistic kind of feel and is, is bringing attention to it while not like I don't know, having like a sellout moment, I guess. I don't know if that resonates or not. And then also comparing this video to Lil Dicky's video, um, he did more of like a, I think it was like a claymation thing. So it really, I guess it, to me, it kind of made it feel more sophomore. It didn't make it feel like a genuine thing compared right. to like how uh, Childish Gambino's art style was. It was, it was direct, but subtle at the same time. Wasn't it? I, I vaguely remember. It's been a while since I've actually watched the video for this, even though this song is like, constantly still on my playlist um same well this was the one where it was like the animated kind of like pastel 
style, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was animated, uh, pastel style, and he was in the house just chilling for a moment. And of course, you know, he has like the ripple of the the sun waves and the heat from the ground. But once he goes outside of his house, the whole community is like all the other rappers and singers. Everybody makes a animated cameo. Like there's like a scene where it's like Jay Z and like Drake are like dancing together. There's like um, I don't want to say Beyonce, but uh, some other uh, singer like jumping rope in the background. So it's like a lot of Easter eggs in that video. Uh, so I remember like they actually broke down the video similar to like how they'll do like a Marvel trailer. <laughs> so I actually, I actually like watched the video for that, and I was like, oh, this is pretty dope. So, but it's been a long time since I've seen it as well. The video is really, really well done. If you've never watched it, or if you've only heard the song, not actually watched the video, highly recommend it. I mm-hmm. recommend the song too because it's just very kind of somber. This song does something to me. It does me too, man. Yeah, I I, I have the song on my rotation as well. I actually have it like on my uh, what I like to call my mental health play, playlist or whatever. So like if I'm having like a, a shitty day or like stressed out, it doesn't matter what I'm going through really. This is like the one song that calms me down and picks me up at the same time. It's I weird. Agree with that. Yeah, because it's like it's the, the tone of it is like I just said very somber, but it also has like some up. Not necessarily like tonally, but just in the uh, the feelings that evokes for me is like some upbeatness or some some optimism. Mm-hmm. So There's like an optimistic undertone. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, well, moving on to one of my picks. Uh, following since you brought up Lil Dicky, um, having a whole bunch of artists and stuff on there, and Childish Gambino having a whole whole lot of cameos in his video. Let's go ahead and jump into my pick, the One Blood remix, with 25 people on it. I was about to say, I don't even know how many people's on here, but it is a lot. It is a lot. And this song, to me, it, it popped up out of nowhere, honestly. Like, I haven't listened to it in a while, but then coming up with this uh, playlist, I was like, I was like, there's a song that I like that had, like, a lot of people on it. And I couldn't remember what it was. And then I was like, oh, shit, the One Blood remix. So... Um, I took some notes on this because it was a lot. So I had to kind of like, kind of break all did, of this down. I did not. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all good. So, all right. So the song is called It's Okay, parentheses, One Blood, uh, parentheses, the remix. So this was uh, the game's the song off of his second album called The Doctor's Advocate. And this is around the time he started beefing with G Unit and Dr. Dre and 50 Cent. So. He was signed to when he first came out. He was signed to G Unit, um, Interscope Records. I'm not sure if he was with Shady or Aftermath. I think he was with Aftermath and G Unit, not Shady, but anyway. But yeah, so he was in that camp. So he's with uh, 50 Cent, Young Buck, uh, Lloyd Banks, Tony Ayo, and I think that might have been one more, but I can't remember who else. Anyway, so that was a whole thing. There was a whole hip hop camp. Anybody who knows 50 Cent or that whole camp. 50 will love you one minute and hate you the next. And, yeah. and then go out of your way to destroy you or clown you or roast you into oblivion. So he's so, probably, he's, he's <laughs> like raps, at least top three biggest troll. Oh, like. yeah. Definitely, definitely troll, bully, asshole, however you want to define him. Um, the guy is smart. Don't get me wrong. He made an empire and he roasted the shit out of Ja Rule and then literally did the same exact thing that he did with the whole singing rap <laughs> stuff. That's the part that kills me is like people shit on Ja Rule but then like 50 Cent does the same exact thing. Uh, rapper turned singer or whatever. So um, this song in particular was essentially a fuck you to 50 Cent in the G Unit camp, the original version. Um, and then the remix kind of took a different turn with it. So it has, has a game connotation but also one blood meaning unity within hip hop as well. Right. So he reached out to everybody. And everybody answered. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you can breathe and walk past the microphone, you had an opportunity to get a verse on this song. So uh out of curiosity, were you able to recognize some of them or all of them or any of them? I mean, yes, but like <sighs> Yes and no, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I won't expect you to know all 25, but I'm just curious about, uh, like, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but about how many do you think you you recognized in the song? Like, maybe three. 
<laughs> that's why I said yes and no because like even those three or four like I th- I'm pretty sure I might know but like I could be wrong there's a lot of there's a lot of people on here man is it really 25 art- it's, a total it, artists it, it's actually is more than that technically but yeah it's about <laughs> it's about 25 25 28 depending if you want to count each person individually because there's like groups involved so I have the entire list who 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 made it on this song oh, okay so let's hear it all right, all right so the main guy, the first, the guy that's singing, one blood, you know, one, mm-hmm. one, one, the back, the reggae guy, um, his name is Junior Reed. So they, they sample him, but he also provided additional vocals to the song. So that's the first mm-hmm. person. The first mm-hmm. verse, the first official rap verse in the song was Jim Jones, followed by Snoop Dogg, then Nas, mm-hmm. T.I., and then the game actually rapped on his own song at this point. So he's like the fifth person in on his own song at this point. So far, then I think Snoop Dogg was the only one I for sure recognize out of all. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Snoop killed it. Uh, to me, honestly, everybody killed it. Really, uh, there yeah, may have been. It was yeah, very enjoyable throughout. It. Yeah, I agree. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and considering that there's 25, 26, 27, 28, 45,000 people on this song, I never got bored every time I listened to it. Like I was excited. I was excited to see who's next gonna come up. But anyway, going back. So Jim Jones, Snoop, Nas, Ti, The Game, followed by Fat Joe. Lil Wayne, Nori, then J- uh, Jada Kiss and Style P from the Locks, followed by Fabulous, Jewel Santana, Rick Ross, Twista, The Dog Pound, which is Corrupt and Daz Dillinger, Dub C, E40, Bumpy, um, Chameleon Air, Slim Thug, Young Dro, The Clips, which is No Malice and Pusha T, their group, uh, they showed up. And then for the grand finale, Ja Rule. Showed up at the end of the song and closed it out and killed it. The only the one that I remember, <laughs> no one like no one for sure I recognized was Little Wayne, like Little Wayne and Snoop Dogg, and then <laughs> kind of some of the others. I was like, was that like was that yeah. Nas? Was that blah blah blah? Mm-hmm. But yeah. That's, so man. so I challenged myself. So I, I I took notes to see who all, who all I recognized. The only two I didn't catch was Daz Dillinger and Young Dro. Um, so that was the only one that I couldn't recognize uh, recently. But for me, the reason I'm thankful this song is this, because it has... Oh, thank you. Round of applause. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, the reason I'm thankful this song is this, because this is like a time capsule for me. It's like it, all my favorite rappers or rappers that I really liked at the time all got together. And and this isn't like a, like a DJ smash cut or whatever. These are all original verses for right, this song. Yeah. And you don't get that anymore. You don't you get you, definitely you, don't. And you don't even get the like the posse record like we used to have. So like back in the day we used to have like the you know the label camp or whatever, like the certain piece, like they'll all get together on a song. Rough riders will get all together on a song. Um and uh, what's the name? Uh hypnotized minds, like like those OG camps, uh uh slip and slide, like they'll all get together the whole the whole roster would get together on a song. Usually there's like one song on everybody's album that has like the entire roster on it, like a family kind of vibe. And mm-hmm. you don't get those anymore. And it's just, it's just nice to hear folks I haven't heard in a while and be like, oh, this is dope. It's just, I can like imagine like, of course they all weren't on, they weren't in the same room, but I can imagine like in the, that whole camp and everybody was like, all right, all right, you know, your turn, your turn, go ahead, you'll go, go ahead, man, do, do your thing. So it just, to me, it's nice to have that time capsule of, Hip hop unity, hip hop originality. Everybody sounded distinctive, and that's how I was able to pick it out. It wasn't everybody sounding the same. Uh, there were some that were very similar. <laughs> so, but ultimately, there were some that really stood out. Like I knew when Ross came in, I knew when Twister came in, I knew when Bum B came in, I knew when E Forty came in because you know E Forty with the you know that's E Forty. So, so I know that. <laughs> uh, so. To me, that's why I'm thankful that this song exists. And like I said, it's a cool testament of hip hop unity. Um, when we all can get along, we can get along. Um, it'd be nice, but you know, such is life. But so that's okay, why I like I just, this song. I looked it up, and is was this album from 2019? No, no, this came out in 2006. What? It might have been like the, another the weird YouTube thing yeah whatever. okay yeah. so 2006 that makes more sense because you were talking yeah. about the date and i looked real quick and i was like they did that in 2019 there's no way 
Right? No, 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 no way, no way. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, it was 2006. Uh, like I said, I was like way early on. And I do want to give a shout out, a non-sponsor, but a a, um, a particular plug. If you're interested in reading the uh, game versus uh, 50 Cent timeline of the beef, um, there's going to be a link in the show notes to a website, um, capitalextra.com. They actually did a whole breakdown and I read it and I was cracking up. I was like, these are grown men. I can like, <laughs> I like to look this high up. school children. It is so stupid. Uh, I've, how it all I've watched like YouTube videos on the beefs before, but I would love to sit yeah. there and just read the breakdown of it. That'd be great. Uh, it is like it's I, ridiculous. <laughs> it, it's, it's ridiculous. And like just to give you a snippet, allegedly it started off when Game first came out. He had a song called Hated to Love It with 50 Cent. And during the music video, 50 Cent refused to sit in the front seat with the game. <laughs> so he sat in the back seat in a, in a music video, which implied that the game is chauffeuring him around because right. he's the boss. Game felt some kind of way about that, and it turned into this. And they have like over a hundred disses, a hundred, <laughs> even a hundred diss songs at one another at some point. It went on for like 10, 12, 15 years. Are they still over dissing? something as stupid as no, well, they they bury the hatchet, but again. They both are so similar in demeanor where they'll f- like forgive each other and then at the same breath be like fuck 50 cent right. <laughs> or, or, or fuck game in the same day. So it's like they just go back and forth, back and forth. But allegedly it's over with. Everybody's grown and mature now. You know, like I said, it was over a decade worth of stuff, whatever. But um, who knows? <laughs> like 50 of game can drop a tweet or whatever and be right back at each other's throat again. So who knows? Very true. Very true. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to move along to my next pick mm, i'm gonna do keep it keep it hip-hop i'm gonna do just like you by nf okay. yeah um so similarly to how i feel like feels like summer kind of did a better job compared to like earth by little dicky as good as the song was and like helped promote suicide prevention and awareness. The one eight hundred song by Logic, uh-huh. like just the uh, for NF's version or, or not version, his take on that of like talking about mental health and and all that. Just uh, the way he's approaching it is much more relatable. Uh-huh. Um, and well, I guess that's really what I'm thankful for it for is just being like a a mental health shout out. Like, you know, everyone has crazy thoughts and weird things and, you know, everyone, there's different, whatever you're battling, there's people around the world that are battling the same thing and are feeling similar ways you do in different situations. And it's just, oh, it's nice to be reminded and like, feel like the singer is like down in that mire with you whenever you're going through that and knows really what you're talking about instead of just being like, I don't know. Again, I don't want to like... I feel like I'm kind of like harping and saying like 1-800 was like bad when it's definitely not, but mm-hmm. just it's not as intimate, I guess, compared to compared to just like you, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I agree. And the first time I heard this song, it definitely like struck a nerve. I was just like, oh, damn, this is real. Um, so, yeah, it, I, big, big shouts out to NF. We probably need to do a deep dive on him because I've been seeing him pop up a lot and I don't know much about him. I do admire the fact that he comes hard with the lyrics and pretty much none of his stuff is explicit. So that's like a, a, a yep, major same. feat. Uh, so that's pretty dope. Um, and like I said, the relatability, the the perspective um, was, it was spot on. Because at the end of the day, it's, you know, you feel like you're the only person in the world going through whatever it is you're going through. And there's like millions of others just like you going through the same shit and that's not being dismissive but it's also trying to put it in perspective so you won't feel like the entire world is like crumbling around you it's like you're 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 you're, you are amongst peers so if you need help you can reach out you're not you're not solo in this so and like i like that take on it because sometimes when you're going through it you truly feel like you're by yourself you can be by yourself in a room full of people but in actual reality that person next to you that you're thinking is not going through it, they're going through the same shit you're going through, if not worse. So you just gotta, you know, either reach out to somebody or talk to somebody, ultimately talk to anybody. And I'll be remiss to not, you know, say anything. I think the new number is uh, 9880. 988. So if you're yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yes. 
Yeah, so um, that's the simplified version of the 1-800 song that Logic had, which sucks for Logic because he had a song that the song is the the full 1-800 number for the Suicide Prevention Hotline, and then they changed the number after the song came out. So now he has to do a remix called 988 at some point, I guess. But yeah, well, it sucks for him, but also if he's really trying to like get awareness for it, it's it's a good thing, easy to remember yeah. number and all that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely liked it. I mean, it's I'm a good glad song. you brought up the point of it being dismissive because I've never even thought of it from that angle, but I totally could see it. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's millions of people out there. Like, you get over it. That's, yeah, yeah, that's definitely not the <laughs> the perspective he's taking. I don't believe, but just, I'm, I'm glad you addressed that. I guess. But yeah, it's just yeah. like I said, I'm I'm very thankful just to have have rap be like I don't know talking about subjects like this in a approachable manner. <clears throat> I hope yeah. that this is the beginning i mean this is a, a couple years old now but i hope that we start to see more like this as a trend i mean well, here, well here's the thing it, it exists it already exists in hip-hop the problem is it doesn't it doesn't bubble up to the top is there's people right. who whose job is to suppress these kind of messages because you know yeah just like you use a good song but it's not a bop you're not in a club saying this is you know i'm just like you so you do gotta be in the right headspace for it and i don't want people to think that hip-hop doesn't have songs like this it does exist it's just you're right again yeah. you know they, they don't they don't promote that they rather promote booty hole brown and all this other <laughs> stuff instead of you know messages like this so well let me rephrase i hope that songs like this get popular enough to be able to break through that that bubble so to speak i agree I guess. Yes, that would be nice. let it rise to the top. It would be. It'd be a nice change of pace because some people need to hear these kind of songs to like kind of, kind of get you out of that rut from time to time. Yep. Uh, speaking, of, I guess we kind of keep it in the same vein. Um, similar to just like you, um, life goes on by A Ball and MJG. Um, that was the song that got me personally through some shit. Um, I love that song. That was my first time hearing it on this playlist, mm-hmm. and yeah, that was one of my favorites from your picks. Mm-hmm. Oh, dope. Nice. I like that. Uh, so backstory with this song and this album in particular, uh, A-Ball and MJG are veterans in Southern hip hop. They've been in the game since, I don't know, I want to say 89, 90. Like they oh, represent wow. Tennessee. They've been in the game for a long ass time. A-Ball, like lyrical master, just, just talented. Um, of course, um, being in the South, we always have to, you know, do everything extra hard to get respect in hip hop because, you know, New York and West Coast uh, pretty much uh, dominated the scene. Now the South has a stranglehold on the entire industry and we're not letting go anytime soon. But that being said, this album was when 8 Ball and MJG signed with TI and uh, they were signed to TI's Grand Hustle album uh, label and they dropped this album. And this song, and there's another song on this album are constantly in my rotation. The uh, This song, Life Goes On, featuring Slim Thug, again, place in my heart. It's just, you know, some real shit. You're going through some stuff. Don't feel like you're alone. You know, life goes on. And on, and on. Life goes, goes on. on. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other song on this album that is, I just want to throw out there, which I'm probably not going to add to the playlist because it doesn't really fit the theme. But if you want to, um, you can look it up yourself. The song is called Fuck You Mean. It is actually A Ball MJG featuring Soldier Boy Teller. So, Soldier Boy Teller. 100%. <laughs> yeah. And he told them, and I'm not a big fan of Soldier Boy, but he killed that song. And the really? fact being that, Yes. The fact being that 8-Ball and MJG reached out, was like, hey, we've been in the game for a long time. Yes, you got that Superman, that hoe, whatever. We can reach out to the young generation and still make it our own. And that's just fire. You know what? Isn't, isn't he a Florida-based? Or, or like, didn't he come out of Florida? Who? Soldier Who, Boy? Soldier Boy? I don't know where he came from, honestly. I feel like he's from ATL, but then again, everybody seems to be from Maybe ATL, so is. I don't remember. He's definitely like a Southern rapper, though, right? Uh, I feel it's like... kind of hard to tell. Should be, but I don't know. It's hard to tell. I don't. I, that's how much I don't care. <laughs> <I'm> not soldier boy. <laughs> that's fair. So, I mean, that's fair. Because to me, he's kind of the single. Like he's one of the ones that pioneered pioneered the the stupid rap that's out now, the mumble rap and the stupid stuff that's now out. But that's neither here nor yeah. there. Um, you know what? We're gonna go old school. We're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna force Brandon Lee to hear this song real quick, and then we'll come back. So that's the song. That was pretty good. You yeah. didn't lie. 
Yeah. So again, it's just a combination that I never would have thought to ever exist ever in life happen. And I was like, okay, this is a weird collaboration that worked. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, getting back to Life Goes On. Um, like I said, that that song hit a lot. Um, personally, Slim Thug's verse, the second verse, that's the one that really like hit me a lot. Like I was like, that's some real shit right there. Like, cause that radio only play shit that's whack. He was like, fuck it, I'll just like I quit before I ever do that. And that's how I felt, you know, being a struggling independent producer at the time, amateur rapper like everybody else. I was like, man, this industry is bullshit. Like, like the whack people keep rising to the top, and then the people mm-hmm. who got real talent never get a chance to make it to the top because they don't follow the stereotype or they keep their clothes on or they don't sell out and make some bubble, bubble gum bullshit. But you know, it's okay. I'm nothing, nothing against that, but there's something for everybody. But at the end of the day, it's just like quality over quantity. So, but life goes on, you deal with what you deal with it and you can't dwell on it. So I like that one. That's in my rotation. In the- it's it's going to be in mine. Cause life goes on has been like a personal life motto of mine for years and years and years now at this point. So whenever I saw that immediately, I was like, I keyed into that before I had even started listening to the playlist. Nice. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Very great message. Really good song. No, no notes. Nice. I'm happy. I'm happy you had it on the list. Yeah. <laughs> Cause now I'm I can add, for that add it to my playlist. Hell yeah. Yes. You know, since you were talking about, being in the studio and producing i'm going to talk about the song that i chose called the idea by sam lachow featuring mario sweet what did you think of this bruh <laughs> that this song makes me so happy this me song too. makes me so happy it makes me it that i never had a song speak to me like literally <laughs> like, as a producer like hey can you hey can, can you put put a snare right there and put up like at that part and then i mean it just my mind blew up because it, it took me back to being in the studio and then secondly it transformed me tr- it transferred me back into the studio working with the artists the people that i've collaborated with and the fact being that Music is supposed to be about a variety of different subjects and whatever experience you're going through at that time, whatever life species at the time, uh, put it pen to paper or put it in your head and you, you construct a song about it. But the fact being that Sam made a song about making a song <laughs> and then made a song about that song and telling you how he wants the song to go when he's it blew, it, it blew my mind. so great, dude. This is it, a song, <laughs> and this is, I'm, I'm thankful for this song because this really opened my eyes to like what like just to even think, start thinking about it in the most shallowest terms this production in music uh-huh. um i heard this not it was probably right around the time where you and i first met because it came out in 2014 and it was around that time that i first heard it it's been it was deep 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 in my liked <laughs> youtube videos where i just I came across and i was like oh yeah this song um, man. yeah man so many layers it's such a fun song the man, saxophone I- is chef kiss <laughs> Bruh, like every time the song comes on, I am a full on Cheshire cat. Like, I had a full on Joker smile. Like, I am grinning from ear to ear. Like, I've never had such a toothy smile ever, ever in my life. Like, I, I was happy to hear that you enjoyed it. I was hoping you would. Bruh, it warms my heart every time I hear this song. Like, I love it. Like, it's, it's, it's definitely on the top of my, like, my constant rotation list. Like, this entire, this entire playlist to me is solid. Like, this, this entire playlist this week got me through like a lot. Like I just I like the, to put it to put it to put it mildly. Um, life sucks, work sucks, everything has been sucking lately. So for this to kind of happen around that time um, to do a podcast about things we're thankful for, it kind of re rejiggered my mind a little bit and made me be thankful for songs existing and some of the songs the messaging and some of these songs um so it was like i I needed to hear that i needed to feel that and that song in particular just really just it brings me so much joy it's just even if even if you don't care at all for how a song is made and all that like like me and terio do just you can tell 
I feel like, in my opinion, that he had a lot of fun making it. Oh, yeah. And that, that bleeds into the entire song just completely. Yes. So it's just a fun, it just gives you a shot of just like good fun times. <laughs> Yes, like you said, we need that sometimes to get through the day or the week or whatever it may be. Yeah, that's a freaking literally like again. I can go on and on about on and on about it, but yeah, this this song is just it literally transfers me back. No matter where I'm, I'm driving. I'm like, oh man, I remember that one time in that one song where I stupid like man, I can go on and on. I'm not trying to hold the podcast up. I'll put it this way. When he was like, put the horn in here, put that there. There's been times where I made songs that had a dolphin in it. And I had to justify the dolphin being in a song. I was like, just trust me, it's gonna work. And they're like, like, why you got a damn dolphin in this? Song? Shut up, like, listen to it. They was like, God damn it, it works. <laughs> so, but I was like, don't judge me. Like, I'm no one crazy, but let me put this down. Let me just hear how it sound. And then if it work, it work. If it don't, it don't. But I'm gonna tell you it's gonna work because I, I got the vision for it. And yeah, it just hearing that song made me want to blow the dust off my mic, wipe down my keyboards, and get back in the game. But I don't know, I'm too old for that stuff now. But Man, it's just it's it's a uh, it, it brings me a lot of joy. It, ma- it makes me happy. <laughs> yes, yes. So, job well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Brandon Lee. I was a little nervous. <laughs> I was like, I think he'll really like this one, but there's a chance he might hate it. So I'm happy you liked it. Oh yeah, absolutely loved it. All right. Well, what song do you want to go next? Ooh. Okay. Since we're talking about things that make me happy and things that bring me joy and production. I gotta go to my girl Chica. Prodigy. Oh my god. This is another First, one of my favorites of yours. Bruh. You picked. So yes, that album. If you have not listened oh. to Chica's Samson album, and it's spelled Chica C H I K A album. It's called Samson. S A M S O N. I know I got an accent, so I gotta spell it out for y'all. Um that <laughs> it's album, really good is so solid and it's her debut album she was uh discovered on twitter um doing freestyles and such and she is a giant black girl from alabama um and she when i say people people, when people say people from the south can't rap or can't put pen to paper put that album on i guarantee you go shut the hell up (laughs) and put this song on in particular prodigy it, she goes so hard and again yeah, this is another song i relate to because it's just like you know the song starts off as like you know i you know she said she just she just touched down in a new location everybody's looking at her because the size of she is and i don't give a fuck i'm a prodigy like just deal with it i can't help that i'm mm-hmm. smart i'm brilliant i'm talented and y'all gonna feel some kind of way regardless and i'm not gonna let that kill me because i am who i am and and i'm just gonna just lay it out to you and the bar beat marriage which by the way um i did a little bit of digging the reason why her album not reason but the one thing that does help out a lot her album was produced by the same producer so like all the different songs and all the different sounds same guy one one producer yeah that helps have the the cohesiveness of the full package yes everything blends together exactly everything blends together and just sonically is diverse but yet it just everything is seamless you put that you press play and you just let it ride and the first time i heard this song prodigy i was in my car thankfully because i heard the bass the way it ought to be heard and i was like oh okay we're doing this like it's like the whole song is like like a pep rally march like just it just comes at you it's like okay and then when that third verse hit and that beat drop and that bass go doom Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, like I just automatically like I feel like I'm about to step up to the mic, you know what I'm saying? But like I don't got to. She just like there's no room to breathe. Like she's like killing it. Like every breath, there's a purpose in this song, and just lyrically, sonically, like oh, so beautiful. Yeah, the entire song is a cerebral experience. I feel like yes, <clears throat> absolutely. And again, yeah. Alabama represent roll time probably lost half the audience right now but i'm sorry i had to represent that i want to leave you keep saying that real tired bring your ass back here <laughs> i do love the line where it's like falling silent when i walk up in the building worry about their future like i'm here to snatch their children and then she even calls out afterwards fuck that line was brilliant yeah and like i didn't get it so i looked it up and it's talking about like uh football players someone married sierra and then adopted futures kids or something which is like yeah, the, the, the reference Russell Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, 
But man, it is a brilliant line. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I, just, I don't know. I, you, it's not the first time I've seen something like that where someone immediately calls out they just had a great line, but it always makes me happy. And mm-hmm. in a song full of great lines, just, I don't know. That was like a nice little <laughs> bow on top, even though it's right at the beginning. Yeah, I, I love that. It's just, it, it's, it's to me, like this song is the right amount of cockiness. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's not overbearing, but it's like, I know who I am. I know my shit. I got my bravado. You gonna respect me because I'm a prodigy. And you know, if you don't like it, there's your problem. But most importantly, <laughs> she brings it. <laughs> like how many yes. times do people off on a song talking about how they're the the best rappers alive? And it's like mid the best. It's whereas, not even mid. It's yeah, just like right? or, or worse. But, like yes, she comes on it and she. Oh, I, I, let me look it up because there's a line. It's literally the very first, very first line of the very first verse where it's like, nobody do it better than me, not incredibly. So it's like, she's saying no one does it better than me, but if someone does, it's by a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> right? by a margin. <laughs> right. Like, they're barely, they might barely squeak it out like on one song, but then the next song is going to be back the other way. You know, just that kind of mentality is just, ah, it's, it's, it's great. She can love it. There's another line on this. Let me see. Let me find it. Uh, There's so many good lines in here, bro. No, uh, the line (laughs) that killed me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But the one that really got me, not got me, but like the one I really appreciated was in the third verse when like, you know, she was like, okay, like, like I told y'all to check around because we about to mosh the shit or whatever. And then when she said, I'm throwing away my Valenciagos, I'm putting on my cleats. I was like, she's like, she's like, I was like, fuck the shoe. Like as a chick, she was like, nah, I don't need no fancy shoes. I'm ready to come in and kick some ass. Like I'm ready to get down. And I was like, oh, that's so grimy. It is. <laughs> yeah. Not, like you said though already, the whole third verse, she's just like, oh, the like a, a, a adrenaline aggressiveness really ramps up. I feel yes. like. Yes. Yeah. What a that's good so song, good. man. What a good album. Yes. Yes. It, it, it makes me smile. Ear to freaking ear. Freaking love it. That's one. Um, that's an album I'm definitely need to go back and listen to again soon. Oh yeah. Um, you know I'll, I'll stick it out with uh with staying in the hip hop lane, I guess so to speak, for my last hip hop song I got on my selection. Um, <clears throat> referred to him earlier, but this is Little Dicky's Russell Westbrook on a farm. Okay. And I am thankful for this song just because this is more of like a personal one, I guess, but just the whole analogy of that he like takes to compare himself joining the rap game to Russell uh, Westbrook being on a farm and then discovering basketball. I don't know. It's just something that has, since the first time I heard it has really resonated with me for some reason. It's something I kind of randomly will think on from time to time, just any given time, any given week or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, just the idea of like, you know, once, once whatever you're supposed to do, whatever you're like really good at, once you find it, just that it'll kind of have this like, this moment, you know, of like, yeah. this is it. And yeah, just, that's not, it's like I said, it's more of a personal one than kind of a large subject matter type, but just that idea of finding where you belong, what you, what you're, what you're good at and like really excel at and kind of, you know, even if you have a farm that you're trying to take care of, just grabbing that and taking charge of it. Yeah. Uh, question about this song. Was this like a mixtape song or was this like an official release or what? This was so like little Dicky started out making a lot of like just YouTube, mm-hmm. like music that he would just like put out like for free. Essentially he would just put on his YouTube page. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them would be like over other like popular beats. Like this one is obviously Drake's pound cake. Okay. All right. Because I saw the cover. I knew it was a play on Drake, but I didn't yeah. know if this is a, if this is originally a Drake song or if this is like, a, I didn't beat know. Is, I, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure okay. it's pound cake, especially because at the end he's like pound cake, pound cake. According okay. to Drake and Jay-Z, that's what a pound cake is or whatever he's, whatever he says at the end. Gotcha. I probably lost a lot of hip hop credibility on that one, but it's, we've been listening to a lot of music. Sorry. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, also, if you didn't have like the specific song pound cake in the head, that just sounds kind of, that's just a random non sequitur at the end almost. I mean, yeah. I'll give you some credit. 
That's true. That's true. I, I will take a little bit. I, I will take that life raft <laughs> that you just threw out at me. I appreciate it. Uh, well, I mean, I, like I remember it now, but I'm also not the biggest Drake fan either. So it probably was one of those songs yeah, that kind of just either. really, yeah. But that beat, love that beat. That beat is it's, so It's good. one of the beats that after that song came out, a, a lot of because there for a while I would listen to uh, Sway in the Morning. It always has people do like the the five different songs, but they freestyle over the mm-hmm. five different bits, whatever. That was like one that they had in rotation for a good while. So that one, you would constantly hear people freestyle over it. If you watch mm-hmm. any of those videos or listen to them at all. Um, yeah. It's which is the main reason I was familiar with it, but uh, it is okay. a really good beat. Yes. Yes. That is an excellent use of the, uh, method man, um, cream sample. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I also so, say, in my opinion, this is like whenever someone says, oh, Lil Dicky doesn't have like, you know, he's more of a comedic rapper or parody rapper. This is this is one of the first examples I send to like disprove that mm-hmm. he's, he's got good bars. This oh, song he, taught me what the word ubiquitous was. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look it like, up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he literally tells you to look it up in the song. Um, no, nah, like this song definitely it definitely shows uh, Lil Dicky is a force to be reckoned with when. He really wants to. Um, and like, I admire people like that, like who are so talented that they don't use their full strength. It was like, yeah, I can if I really want to. Like, I'm not comparing the two. Don't get me wrong. But he de- like to me, little Dicky kind of gives me a little bit of Andre 3000 vibes. Don't flame me. Hear me out. What I'm saying is when you're so smart, and you got so many different talents that you don't use your full muscle. Because like it doesn't really interest you, doesn't provide you joy. It's not that you can't do it. It's just that you're so smart with it that it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, what's really what engage for? you? Yeah, it doesn't engage you, or it doesn't really like spark you like uh, creatively. It's like I can do. I can. It's effortless. That's where I'm trying to work. It's so effortless for those kind of people that they get bored with it and rather do other things than that. It's not that they don't have the talent. They just choose not to invest the time and energy into it because you know. This, they're, they're already fluent in it or whatever. Right. But, but yeah, so when that came on, I was like, okay, go ahead. And I didn't like, I, I just hit the, I hit the play this and hit play and didn't really like, you know, look at the song titles or whatever. Um, and when this song came on, I was like, okay, Lil Dicky, I remember seeing Lil Dicky, but and then the song started talking about Russell, Russell uh, Westbrook. And I was like, huh? Okay, I'm following along with the story. I was like, okay, I mean, that's a, that's a good metaphor. And then uh, when I picked up my uh, <laughs> picked up my phone again, I was like, oh shit, that's actually song title. It's about, <laughs> it's about, about the far. I thought it was just like a non sequitur, but kind of made sense with the story with the narrative. I didn't know that was that was actually song title. So that was my um, <laughs> my brain fog moment at the time. But yeah, he killed it, top to bottom, literally, literally like honestly, like Drake, just give Dicky the song. Like this, this is song now. I'm sorry, like. I mean, I don't know what Drake did on this song. I don't care anymore. I just little dick. This is this is little dicky. Not song. as good as this. I don't think. Oh, uh, and I'm sorry. Sorry for the Drake fans. You can go sing y'all and whine and cry about it later about him being so successful later on. But, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I like this song. Man. It's a good. It's a good message. And at the end of the day, um, it, the song through various different you know lyrics and metaphors and similes and all that good stuff. It basically boils down to exposure. So. That's why I think exposure is super important. Um, me coming from a small town in Alabama, um, if my mom didn't pack up and leave and and um, you know moved moved us out to Atlanta, I wouldn't be doing this right now. I'll still be down there smoking weed, having eighteen different baby mamas, and not doing anything else because I wasn't I wouldn't be exposed to anything. Not to say True. that that's I'm not saying that that's the general outcome, but I mean I'll go back home and visit folks and visit things and see things, and it's like. Wow, that store has been burnt down for 20 years. Ain't nobody put nothing there yet. Um, meanwhile, up here in Atlanta, you know, <laughs> you see a hole in the ground. They put a condo there. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> so just you know, again, exposure is a lot, and no matter race, color, creed, or whatever, just especially for the young generation, show them something other than what's you know mainstream. Let them. Let them experience a lot of different things. So that way, once they become of age, they can make a choice. Um, I don't have any kids, but that's something I'm thankful I had an opportunity to have was the opportunity to try 
and see if I like this or don't, don't like that or this doesn't really spark my mind or spark my interest so I don't really care about this but then music came into my life and it's always has been a part of my life but it came into my life as far as I like, take a piano lessons and creating and it let me fast forward to now doing the music podcast because I can't stop thinking about music. It's always in my mind. It's always in my brain. The curiosity of it, the gumbo-ness of it, where it came from, the stories within the stories, on top of the stories and the origin story. Like it's a never ending treasure trove of like content and it brings me so much joy. So exposure is key. And that's why I like this song for the message of it because had he not decide to step out the farm that day, he would still be out there. So if he hadn't told Tim to let him down so we could go see what the weird round rim was all about. Yeah, and that weird switch noise. <laughs> so Yeah, man. I never was, I never necessarily looked at it or like I guess phrased it in my head through that lens of, of exposure, but hit the nail on the yeah. head, I think. That's very true. Yes, yes. Okay. Um continuing on. Um hmm. Okay. Speaking of exposure, let's go talk about black women. Yes, I've been exposed to black women. Um, <laughs> out of context, you, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, the song Black Woman, I know I'm probably going to pronounce her name wrong. I meant to look this up earlier. Um, I'll say... Fatimata? Yeah. I guess. Diawara? Yeah. yeah. Fatimata, Diawara, and Lauren Hill. Um... This song, I'm happy this song exists because it it came out of nowhere for me. Um, this song was on the soundtrack of a movie called The Harder to Kill. I think The Harder The Harder They Fall. I think is what it's called. I think mm-hmm. I said it wrong. It's uh yeah, The Harder They Fall. So this movie, if you're not if you have not seen this movie, it is such a phenomenal movie. First and foremost, um, the movie stars um, what's the man's name? Uh, Jonathan Majors. Uh, and it's basically a black Western movie uh, with a solid black cast for the most part. Um, and oh, it's a good take just on came it. out. Like, yeah. yeah, it's recent. It's recent. Um, uh, another another song to go check out is uh, Guns Go Bang with uh, uh, Kid Cudi and Jay-Z. It's also on the soundtrack. They literally, you know, like in the Westerns where they have the choo, 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 they literally mm-hmm made a song with that in it <laughs> and it goes so That's hard a lot of big name people i don't ever hear about this yeah it, it's, it's it came out on netflix and of course there's so much oh, content out there it's you know things come out and this you know fly by night but the movie is so good um the acting is phenomenal um it's a great movie so at the towards the end of the movie you know, during the credits was rolling and I just kind of just, you know, had it up playing in the background. I think this song came on. I was like, hold up. What? Laura Hill? Where'd she come from? Because she dropped the miseducation in 99, 2000. It was like, I hate white people and <laughs> dropped a smoke bomb and disappeared. <laughs> so, uh, so, um, but then she resurfaced on this song and this song goes so hard. It There's does. no reason. There's no reason why Laurel had to go as hard as she did on this song. Because like um, I'll, I'll just like I want to say first before, or just a, as a quick jump in, like the first half of the song is like very like African mm-hmm. uh, sound infused or whatever, right? And then it it mm-hmm. has such uh, not a, necessarily a hard switch like tonally, but just going from like uh, the, the more singing along with like the 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 beat or whatever just to her like you just said just coming and killing it the first time i was yes. like what yeah yeah <laughs> and, it, and she's not listed on the on the thing as like a mm-hmm. the artist or whatever so i was like who is this at first mm-hmm. um yeah this was another one i, I enjoyed pretty much uh, or pretty well yes and uh and um uh fatimata she's from mali which is like West Africa. So, and she's like a pop singer out there. So they're pop um, uh, music. So just that, that combination of Fatimata and just out of nowhere, Lauren Hill comes through and just like, like some of the lyrics and when she was like, uh, like a, a lot of people throw money, at, throw money at me. None of that just excites me. Like, um, this is not my first rodeo. Like, like gone with that bullshit. Like, I'm not trying to be on your puppet show. Like I was like, <laughs> Damn, she just like 
told everybody to leave her the fuck alone. If she want to do music, she can do it. She, I don't need y'all help. Like, just <laughs> like leave me be. And then she sang at the end of it too. And I was just like, oh, damn, she still got it. So it just to me is like a pleasant surprise for her to just pop up out of nowhere. Um, also in this movie, like I said, Jonathan Majors, uh, Lakeith Stanfield, uh, Regina King is in it. Idris Elba. Uh, Idris Elba is in it. Uh, R.J. Kryler, he's in it. Um, Cole. Yeah, it's a star-studded cast. Uh, a, a slight spoiler for anybody who wants to go see it, but it, there is a, a part of the Western where, again, it's a black Western in this world, or whatever. So, like, it's ba- like the characters are inspired on actual western outlaws but it's like their kind of take on it um so <laughs> there's a part where they have to go to a city called white town <laughs> and again it's in the western so you got that whole tumbleweed brownness cactus all that stuff the rugged tuck- when they go to white town even the dirt is white the building is white <laughs> the people like are white literally every the single thing is white, white. Everything is white. So when they when these black people show up, they're like, what the the hell? This is t- <laughs> everything is so white. The church is white, the office is white, the table, like the wood is white. <laughs> it was like, damn, they bruised everything. I was like, no color anyway. Man, we died so hard at that scene. I was like, they wrong for that. So, but I I knew you were enjoying that. But like, it was so funny. So it's it's a solid movie. It's a solid movie. It's I'm really gonna, good. I'm gonna add it to my list for sure. I don't yes, know how that absolutely. one slipped through the cracks. But okay, well, I am. Let's see, what do I got left? I'm going to talk on the song about you. I had to think of how to like bring that in by XXYYXX. It is a kind of a weird one, I feel like. Uh, it's kind of like a... Weird a, for some. Right at home for me. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that makes me very happy. Um, yes. This is it's, it's a kind of weird, somewhat trippy electronic. So I'm not quite sure what genre this falls into. Um, I was I would say electronic chill, electronic chill. Yeah. The, the reason I'm thankful for this song, let me let me let me start with that. Is whenever this came out in like 2013, 2014, it for me at that time, if you said like electronic music, as far as I knew it as was like the the uns uns club dance stuff and dubstep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was like all I knew. That's all I'd ever heard as far as electronic. And then I don't know if I stumbled across this or if one of my friends, like senior year of high school or freshman year of college or somewhere, stumbled across this. But this whole album, which is self-titled XXYYXX, is just full of different sounds like this. Where it's just very, I don't know, it was the first time I had like put on headphones and closed my eyes. It was like the first time as an adult where it ele- just a pretty much mainly electronic styled song just took me on like a mental soundscape journey and yes. really like opened my eyes to like what what different sounds you can have in music and really kind of sent me on a music exploration yeah uh, journey which is yes. like right before <laughs> i met you and so i was like mid you know just any and all music that i could devour i was trying to listen to whenever you and me became friends so it really yeah. worked out well for that time wise looking back yes yes you this song for lack of better words primed you yeah, yeah i guess for, for this it, journey I mean, that, that's a good way to put it honestly it primed me for just yeah for kind of getting outside of my the, the box i had been listening in for yes well, several years at that point yeah yeah so when we come when we combine our playlist uh together and this was on there i was like okay <laughs> Not because of the song, but I was just like, first of all, why why haven't I not heard this song? And then secondly, I was I was confused for you, like mainly because I was like, how's he, how's he thankful for this song? I immediately loved it because again, this is like X X Y Y X X about you. 
that's I guess for lack of better terms, like sonically, like that's my my happy place. Like those kind of chill songs like that. Like I can listen to those kind of songs and be in the bestest mood, have the most energy. I can work out the songs like that. Some people put songs like like that, they'll like get sleepy or get drowsy, and be like, oh man, you need, you need to crank it up. I'm like, I'm having the best time right now. I'm living my best life. Like, y'all don't know, like I'm on this journey. Let me also interject, I am sober. <laughs> I'm not taking anything extra. Um, but it's just from my thought pattern and the way I'm so like scatterbrained, also like thinking about things and also a little bit of ADHD. Um, it helps me. And like yeah. I love that I love that calmness. It just kind of, it's soothing, it's comforting. That's the word I was looking for. Comforting. The song is comforting. Yes. So when you put it on, I was just like, well, we've added to the list and that song came out. I was just like, ooh, I like this. It's like an audio blanket <laughs> for me. So I Definitely. Again, I thoroughly enjoyed every last song on this playlist. I cannot express how much I enjoy this playlist. This is top tier after listen playlist, in my opinion. Um, I want to say and- I don't. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Continue. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say I don't know if necessarily it's like a, a a blanket for me per se. I do really enjoy the song, but for, for me, one thing I kind of realized as I was listening to it this week is it, it kind of has that build up right and then like the, mm-hmm. the the cacophony of different sounds kind of in the middle where it like really all like hits home or whatever and it's mm-hmm. again you know at, at, whenever i first heard the song i was used to like dubstep drops yeah and so i mean i guess it's kind of a drop but it, it's just yeah, it's, it's a different kind of drop it's a different kind of drop and it doesn't matter how many songs i've heard this song or how many times i've heard this song over the years um I always get a little bit of like anticipation Mm -hmm. building up to that. And I've always like, I always kind of go back and forth on, is it, is that mainly just because of how the song is structured? Because it has like that really long note that kind of leads into it. And I know that's Mm -hmm. part of it, but is it also just because it's like you said, it's such a good song. That's, I don't know, maybe just kind of a comfort song. Now that I think about it in a way, I mean, that is kind of a good way to put it. But, I mean, I mean, it's to, to each to each uh, to each its song. But um, for me, I, I find it comforting because again, it's, it's soothing the instrumentation, the build up, the the composition of the song, even with the up the up tempo or build up with the loudness of the the synthesized instruments and all that stuff coming through. It's still, it's still, it's not like it's not like dubstep. You're like a whole bunch yeah. of like robots. It's, it's not. It's not a whole bunch of robots fucking. Like, I still that's not, end when the song ends. It it ends with me at a place of peace. I will. I will say to that. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. Yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, again, it's it's already added to my my, my library and stuff. But um, well, okay. This is a group I had not it. thought about in years. By the way, this is another one that was like deep in my <laughs> YouTube like from like <laughs> over a decade ago. Yeah. Uh, I just was like, oh man. Yeah. I used to love those guys. Yeah, I definitely. The I, I want to hear more from them for sure. Like, I want to hear more from them. I want to hear more from Sam, uh, Lachau or whatever. I want to hear more from them. Um, more for NF. Like, I know Lil Dicky and Lil Chow's gave me this. So, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed every song you added onto this um, playlist. Uh, Sweet. Okay. Well, I guess I have no choice but to swing over to my version. Electronica, because I had to throw something on here because I'm thankful for it as well. Um, I had to give another shout out to the beloved. Um, this is another song from the album uh, Conscious, and this song I hated at first. This really? is not one of my. This is one of the songs on the album that I would skip that I just was not feeling. Hmm. Um, so, um, I'm like a light sweet harmony. Obviously. If you listen to the, one of our previous episodes, Dream On is like one of my absolute favorite songs. Um, so this song came on and I think I was doing something and I couldn't get to the skip, but I was like, whatever, I'll just I'll just power through it or whatever. And when Old Girl came through at that last verse. Dude, I was about to say the first time <laughs> I heard it, her coming in is what made me love it. It was yeah, exactly. I, I didn't have a problem with it. It was a pretty decent kind of chill you know electronic dance song or whatever it was, it was pretty good but then yeah, yeah she comes in and she's like like belting out like the uh the like background would that be background yeah yeah, yeah, she, yeah well no she was doing ad-libs she was doing ad-libs okay, um, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, it just like you know, the message of the song is good. You know, first it and is. foremost, you know, it like is. celebrate your life. You know, basically be your own reason for you know for your celebration. Like you don't have to depend on other people. Like you are the reason. And, and, and don't just, wait for circumstances to decide for you. Like go out yes. and and make life a celebration, which is a beautiful message. Yes. Totally. Yes. Thoroughly. But when I said uh, when. What was it, John? I think the guy's the man member's name. Um, John, I'm assuming that was his wife, I'm assuming. Um, I didn't do the research on it, so I apologize on that. It's been a crazy week. But um when she came through, again, I think again, I think I was driving or something. Um, and I literally stopped. I was just like, Whoa, hold up. What? Like this is the song? Like, the song is like five minutes long. So like it was it was kind of getting to the point in my head, I was like, Okay, we probably should start fading out now. Um and well, it does kind of have a fade out at like like three three thirty three forty five ish I want to say yeah C- could be off a little bit there but yeah it kind of like dies down it, you know some of the instrumentation goes away and it quiets down and then it comes back yeah. in with that last little bit and that's whenever she starts singing yes oh, so yeah. yeah and then she hit that note at the end I was like oh I got the chills like goosebumps I, I was like like that like I had this this is one of those songs where I had to rewind that part every time like I'll listen to the whole song. And then her part would come on and it'll, the, it'll try to fade out. I'm like, nope, I need to hear one more time. I'll go right back to that one part. And when she come in with her ad libs and just, it's it's like the right amount. It's not like so much over singing where it gets like overbearing from time to time, but it's what this song needed. It needed that part. And just for her to just, oh, it got me. It got me. So, I and I had to add this song on there for that reason. I just, I'm happy this song exists. And Again, it's one of the songs generally, like I say, it's a good message, good, um, good, uh, chill, electronica, whatever you want to call it, vibe or whatever. But I just like the build up. I love, um, John singing in this song. I, I just, I, I like his quiet singing style. That really, I like that. I did want to bring is... out, or never mind. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Different, different thought. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it happens sometimes, but I I, I thoroughly enjoy. I, I like his singing style because um, it's not like he's not like gonna blow you out the way. He's not a Luther Vandross. He's not like you know a uh, powerhouse singer. But with the the music being as soundscaping as it is, it's like his voice is kind of narrating you through it, mm-hmm. so to speak, and. I enjoy that. And then when you have the accompaniment of um, uh, the female vocal on top of that, it just, it's a good blend. And then when they turn it into a celebration at the end of the song, when she just said, uh, uh, okay, y'all singing too quiet. Let me grab this microphone and, <laughs> right. and really tell y'all how y'all supposed to celebrate y'all life. Yeah. And she hit that high note. I was like, damn it, I'm celebrating with you. <laughs> yeah, kind of demands you too, man. Like, right? <laughs> it is really good. Uh, yeah. So, quick confession about the song is whenever we were i was i was i just hopped on to record this episode and you Mm -hmm. were like all right i'll I'll be you text me like i'll be right on in just a minute or whatever i was like all right i got time to listen to one more song real quick so i actually Mm -hmm. jumped to this song about halfway (laughs) through it so that i could hear (laughs) that last bit um just literally was the last thing i heard out of the playlist coming into this episode just because i wanted to have that bro Not even necessarily i wanted to have it fresh in my mind just out of all of the playlists i was like this is the part i want to listen to one more time before we start bro i'm gonna show you my screen right now i'm not lying to you <laughs> look just just i want you to just uh take a look at my screen this was the last time i was listening to before we started off is it the same thing literally the same song at that same part <laughs> I was literally listening to that same part, and that was and that was one of the reasons. Like when I got back, I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> I don't have no time." Literally, dude, this is scary. <laughs> We're merging. <laughs> We're merging. <laughs> We're merging. <laughs> we accidentally did the fusion dance, but uh, <laughs> uh hi, yeah, I'm Brandon. Yo, <laughs> just. <sighs> It's, yeah, it's so I don't. I don't know if that song is my favorite of yours for sh- like completely, but that's her at the end is my favorite part of any song that you pick for sure, for sure, <laughs> if for sure. Else. Right. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I think right. this is my last pick, I believe. Yes. Yes, this is my, my last pick that I added. Mm-hmm. And it is Little Wing by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. You know what? I promise you, I thought you said Little Wing. <laughs> <laughs> Little <laughs> Wing. W I N G. I meant I, I, I could have said it with an accent and it, it could have came out. Little Wing. <laughs> Little Wing. <laughs> Little Wing. <laughs> <laughs> by the Jimi Hendrix experience. Uh, it's a short little bluesy number. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason I picked this is, uh, first of all, it's like one of my favorite Jimi Hendrix songs. Mm-hmm. It's like probably, if not number one, then number two, I think. Um, mm-hmm. And I really feel like I could have picked several there's a, there's a big number of songs for Jimi hendrix that i could have picked that i'm thankful for for the same reason but i am just grateful for Jimi hendrix in general yeah i know i kind of touched on this on our uh our covers playlist battle yes and i actually kind of misspoke well somewhat i guess where i had said something on the lines of if if he had said alive rock would look completely different omitting the fact rock is or, or does sound the way it does today in large part because of him. Mm-hmm. Um, just the way his, his merger of, of blues and like the upcoming rock movement and like their early mid sixties and just how he just lived and breathed the guitar and was able to just like create these weird sounds, like no live version of his songs were ever played the same just cause he would just float out of him in such a way that mm-hmm. inspired artists for i mean it's still inspiring artists today like so many so so many like famous megastar guitarists who you can make the argument for is like you know in conversations to be like the best guitarist ever will point to Jimi hendrix as an inspiration and his music just like i said you know i'm thankful for just all of it just because rock music was a huge part of my life and growing up and still is to this day and it would not be what it is without him yeah, I agree. I really wish the song was a little bit longer, though. Cause to me, it just felt like it was just starting to get really good. Like I was anticipating more, and then it just phased out. I'm just like, no, why? It's one of those why? that leaves you wanting more, for <laughs> yes. sure. Yes, yes, and that's that's one of the ones I definitely listened to a couple times. And then the way we had the playlist set up, it goes right before I feel like summer, and it's just it's like the perfect segue between the idea. And feel like summer again i'm smiling the entire time like from the idea to little wayne <laughs> uh to little wing down to childish gambino so i'm just like damn these are some good songs so yeah I, I i definitely enjoyed it and again if it i just need maybe like one to two three more hours of like that song would have been great I mean, it's not much to ask for. I mean, <laughs> there is. I, I was reading up on it just out of curiosity as I was, because again, I actually decided I wanted to pick a Jimi Hendrix song and I spent a little bit of time trying to decide which one. And mm-hmm. I was like reading up like what different people had said about Jimi Hendrix and about his different songs, trying to get like a, a an idea, like, like different, like other famous guitarists and stuff. And mm-hmm. there was a few that I remember saying basically little wing one guy in particular is so little wing is like the best guitarists song ever written. Um, mm. It's very good. It's very, yeah. good. very, very good. Bluesy. It's just a good song, man. Yeah. Jimmy just, just kind of hated his singing and, and granted he's not like the best singer as far as range, but his singing does lend itself. I feel like to this style of song where it's like yeah. uh, slower and, and more bluesy. Mm hmm. I 100% agree with that one. I like that one. Good. I'm still, I gotta, I know you said we gotta do a deep dive in NF, and we do, but I also gotta give, get you a deep dive on Jimi Hendrix because I know you're not super knowledgeable about him, not listening to him a whole lot. Yeah, I have it. I have it. I'm, I'm down for either one. I'm ready for, I mean, I'm ready for the experience. So yeah, bring it on. Like, let's, the let's, Jimi Hendrix let's, experience. Yes. Sign me up. Get my tickets ready. <laughs> All right. Speaking of tickets, keep going up. 
not really speaking of tickets at all, but anyway. <laughs> I mean, the prices of tickets keep going up thanks to Ticketmaster, so it's kind of... <laughs> true, true, true. It's in the ballpark. Definitely, definitely if you want to see these three people on stage. Uh, uh, yes. So, <laughs> so the song is called Keep Going Up. It's Timberland featuring Nelly Furtado and Justin Timberlake. Uh, this song came out a couple weeks ago from the time of recording, so it's like really recent. And I was excited. Then I saw online that Timberland got some new music coming out because obviously I'm a Timberland fan. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm excited. And then they were teasing it, saying, that, okay, Nelly Furtado and Justin Timberlake about to hop back. You know, they they got the game back together. And I think, where was that? Was that 20, 2006, 2008 when they took over the world with the promiscuous girl and future sex, love sounds and sexy back and all I that? I think so. Yeah. 708 from, for not yeah. wrong. Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. So, just sonically, like these three people, when they get together, they make good music together. And and then for the yes, video for the song, they um the chemistry, you can tell that they genuinely care about one another. And in the song it kind of reflects that as well. Um so it, it's it's it, i I like the message in the song. It's just saying, you know, I'm hey, I'm on my way up. I mean, things are working up, things are looking up. I'm just I'm you know, I'm on, I'm on my way, you know, on my way to the top. I just keep going up. I'm not I'm not looking back. I'm going up. So I like the message in the song. It's nice to to, to see them get back together. Um, Timbaland isn't doing a lot of singing. He just kind of does his little talky stuff on it. Yeah, um, some ad libs and, and stuff. Yeah, and it's not. I'm happy about that to you know a certain degree, um, but uh, <laughs> but I, but it's nice hearing Nelly Furtado's voice, and her voice is so distinctive. It is. And, it really, and really is. I love her voice. Like I've been I a fan so. of her. I love. I've been. I've been in love with her, but I've loved her voice ever since I heard shit on the radio from way back in the day, like her first album, like Folklore. I was like, this chick is like, she's so weird, but like cute at the same time but like talented and she writes her own stuff and and it's like portuguese and canadian like it's just like again the gumbo like all these weird things yeah. that technically makes should go together it makes it beautiful and to see the video and see how you know stunning she is and still doing it and just like at a place in her life now that she's like i can just music make music because i want to make music and it's just it's just nice to see that. Um, I like when artists get to a point where they're not making something just to pay the bills, or they're not making something because the label says so. Um, it's more so like this is what I want to make. I'm feeling this right now. I'm in a good space. Let's just have fun. And to me, those are the best songs to come out. And even though the song technically isn't like up tempo, but it's just like it's just a nice little the beat the drum pattern is up tempo, but the chords are kind of like they're kind of like uh, I guess minor chords or they're, yeah. they're kind of darker. Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah, so like it's a little bit darker in tone, but the message is good. So also I like the I like that as well. Yeah. Um. So it's it's good. It, again, it's just nice to, to to see the game get back together. Um. Before you jump in, I do want to acknowledge something that we haven't really had a chance to acknowledge on the podcast, um, in a while. Um. So our first episode began with us talking about our favorite artists' debut albums. Um. Yours was Childish Gambino. Mine was Timbaland and Magoo. Um, sadly, Magoo has passed away this year. Um, he was very young. He was like 50 something. Um, I didn't look into the cause of death. I mean, I'm not that kind of person that I feel like I should know because clearly it's a pair of social relationships. I've never knew the man personally, but that being said, me being a fan and Timbaland and Magoo as a group, um, meant a lot to me. Um, just for my love of music and literally being like one of my, if not the first album I ever purchased, um, very, per- very first CD I ever purchased, um, it meant a lot to me to have to, it, it, it means a lot to me to have experienced this music, uh, endure the criticism and still be a fan regardless of what other people say, or I don't know. It's just anytime someone dies or a celebrity dies, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it sucks because, you know, they were a human and you know they have families and, and all those kind of things too but um this one kind of hit a little different for me because i was like is you, you kind of when you get to that age in life where you start seeing your childhood heroes pass away it's like damn it like really kind of sucks so 
But yes, I just wanted to acknowledge that on the pod that we still got love um, for Tim and Magoo. Absolutely. And um, rest in peace, it, Magoo. Rest in peace, Melvin Barcliff. Melvin um, Barcliff, yeah. AKA Magoo, AKA Ooh, or whatever. Or Magoo, you know, however you want to put it. But, <laughs> but uh, just, you know, to, ha- to hear this all come out, uh, it just lets me know that obviously Tim was in the lab, and it also makes me want to not necessarily want but i'm curious how he's going to pay homage to magoo with the with the new music that's coming mm-hmm. out i wonder if they <clears throat> if they got a chance to collaborate before his passing so um uh, not that that's paramount but you know it just makes me as a fan right i would love, to, would hear, love to see it You're right yeah i'd love to hear tim and magoo together one more time or have them release some um so unreleased material so it just uh it sucks, but R.I.P. to Magoo. Um, and uh, it's just nice to hear this song. Um, that keep going up and things progressing. And just like we discussed earlier with A-Ball and MJG, life goes on. Um, so I just got to pay homage, keep remembering, don't forget, yep. but don't dwell on it. So, um, like, like I said on that first episode, you thanks to you, I am now a Timbaland fan. So... You know, anytime you throw a song of his in a playlist, if I haven't heard it already, I'm like, let's go. We're Timbaland. Yeah. Um, yeah. The song delivers that. Of course, you know, pretty all the points you said, Nelly Furtado, Justin Timberlake. I love both of those guys as well. They both kill it. Uh-huh. All three of them have, like you said, known each other for forever. They always do so well together. I have, I feel like kind of a unique sound. Um, yeah. They get together somewhat. Yeah. And yeah, man, I, I, I had not heard this. I did not know this song had come out until um, you put it on here. I don't think I don't think you sent this to me before this playlist. Mm, I didn't. Yeah, because it had to grow on me because I, I was I was expecting another give it to me where it was kind of like up tempo. disco mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting like the somber, um, not somber, but like a mid tempo, low mid tempo song. So when I heard it, because it came out like at midnight and it's one of those nights where I just happened to be up. And I was just like, oh. Oh, okay. I lost a step for a few more minutes and hear the song, but then I heard it. I was like, that wasn't what I was expecting. I don't hate it. I don't love it, but mm, I'll get a couple more listens. And then after two more listens, I was like, okay, I'm in. So I think I liked it from the get go, personally. That's good. That's the, I, yeah. Hey, welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the problem sometimes when, like, when you're a fan of some people, it's like, I like what you did. That's not what I wanted you to do, but I'm <laughs> yeah. glad you did it anyway. Like, like who am I to say? So, <laughs> no, that's a good point. I, I, that's, I've not been a long enough or a, a fan for a long enough time to have like expectations yeah. built in as much as you would have. So it makes yeah. sense. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the cost of fame. You know, not fame, but like you know, being a fan will yeah. never satiate it. You're like, oh, that's great. Where's the next one? Where's the next one? Where's the next one? I'm like, damn, I gave you a whole album. Leave me alone. <laughs> like no where's the next one <laughs> I finished that one where's the other one <laughs> <laughs> I finished that one already twice damn it more, like, how do you record more. that album <laughs> like, how do you finish recording that how do you get a studio <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> I hear what you're working on I like it where's the next one <laughs> honestly like I do feel like a music crackhead sometimes <laughs> I'm just like I can't get yeah. my fix <laughs> it feels like we're we're constantly in like dry spells of new music and then like yes. a new album or a new couple albums will come out kind of like close in time to each other and it'll be like oh new music yes yes and then we'll listen to nothing but it for like two weeks three weeks four weeks however long and then it's like okay i've heard all i've heard all these on repeat for the last so many times now wait for mm-hmm. new music again <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Another> drive <spell. laughs> yeah <laughs> yep. yeah i feel the same way yeah it's it's, it's challenging so but yeah so these are the songs that we're thankful for um and as you said in the beginning of the episode we're at the top of our list we're thankful to have you as a listener to the podcast to you guys uh, yes uh we're doing relatively well um for our new one and with just us producing it ourselves it's been a journey we're growing and learning along the way and i'm thankful for the bumps in the road as well as the opportunity to flex our creative muscles and try new things and see what works, see what doesn't work. 
um, and still just have fun in it. And the fact being that we're doing this, and it never gets bored. Like, and nope. you know, I, I love it. I love, I love this so much. So, and if you love us so much, you can <laughs> like, follow, and subscribe at afterplaylist.com. Uh, feel free to comment on our YouTube channel. I do try to upload the um, the YouTube videos as well. Uh, the video version, of, not the video version, but a video that has the podcast audio. Uh, feel free to leave comments there. And, you know, we appreciate you as well. And if you have any comments or uh, criticisms or anything you want to share, music related or not, drop us a line. We're open to all of that. So, yeah. And a very big happy Thanksgiving or happy holidays or whatever, whatever, wherever you're at, whatever you may be celebrating this time of year. We, we wish you the best. Hope all that goes super well for you guys. And have you have a happy, good time. Yes. And before we go, um, whatever uh, you guys are making, if there's a plate that's left yeah. over, um, our address is... Okay. <laughs> I do love me some Thanksgiving food, though, man. Bruh, I am going to destroy some Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thanks for listening. And yeah, have a, have a good one, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.